Hey guys, <clears throat> I want to do a video uh, tonight um, discussing how to set up uh, Komodo Internet Security version 5. Um, I'm going to go over three scenarios for you um, and kind of explain a little bit about uh, some of the settings that should be and shouldn't be uh, turned on and off. Um, first off is the average to above average user um, uh, and by that I mean somebody who knows how to um, install remove programs, use a bootable CD, um, maybe change some of the settings in their BIOS, um, repair windows if that need needs to be done, um, things like that. That's That to me is an average to above average user. Um, expert users go above and beyond that and then you have novice users which are at the bottom. Uh, if you are an average to above average user, I highly recommend leaving Komodo just like it comes when it gets installed. That means internet security settings, sandbox on, please don't shut it off. I've seen a couple people shut off sandbox and not change their defense plus settings and then getting themselves infected when they were playing around with malware and then saying that Komodo didn't protect them. The problem is that when you shut off Sandbox and you don't change Defense Plus settings, you're actually shutting off a ton of security features. A lot of time was spent um, by the developers and by the forum mods and um, people contributing to Komodo to set up the security in standard mode to be as good as it can possibly be, uh, while at the same time having very low um, pop-ups. Sand, the, during development, the sandbox was tested against roughly 15,000 um, pieces of malware, and nothing got past it. Uh, by that I mean nothing was left um, in the system infected uh, after reboot. Now, I also want to explain a little bit about the, uh, the sandbox. I've seen a lot of people trying to uh, say that the sandbox in Komodo is not good. People who say that don't understand the way the sandbox works in Komodo. There's two different sandboxes in Komodo. There is the real-time sandbox, and there is the on-demand sandbox. The real-time sandbox is the one that's protecting your computer, of course, all the time. What does that mean? Well, if you go to Google and you type in sandbox and you go to Wikipedia, there is um, an actual list of different types of sandboxes that fall under the general term sandbox. The real-time sandbox for Komodo is called basically a jail. Uh, what a jail does is um, it restricts to policies what the software can and cannot do to the system. By that I mean it can't um, access certain Windows folders. It can't access certain parts of the registry. But at the same time, it can also access other parts, like it can drop files to certain folders. It can drop files to uh, the desktop. Uh, that reason is because the desktop isn't a part of Windows that um, is needed to be 100% secured to prevent uh, the computer from being infected. And while uh, a program is running in this automatic sandbox, jail, whatever you want to call it, it can only do so many things. Um, it can spawn a process, but that process that it spawns is also in the sandbox and it gets the same restrictions as the original one did so it can't do anything either and when you reboot it kills uh, off all the uh, processes that were in sandbox what it doesn't kill off is some of the files that got dropped um, into Windows into you know my documents uh, different you know temporary folders that type of stuff the reason that uh, it's set up like that is if you want to run um, the sandbox it's made like that so it can run in multiple computers easily without having to do a lot of configuration and um, it's been done so it can even run in Windows 64 bit uh, fairly good uh, of course it's always a work in progress just like any piece of software so there's always places where it can be improved but as of right now I think it's pretty good and my testing I have yet to find a piece of malware that uh, remained fully active and infecting the PC upon reboot. The second sandbox is uh, the on-demand sandbox and that is a true uh, sandbox um, that I guess you compare it to sandboxy where it creates a virtual folder and a virtual uh, registry and 
everything about the program gets virtualized and nothing can get to the system. Uh, that sandbox is accessed by right clicking on a file and selecting run in sandbox. Now I don't have any files here yet that I can do that with of course but that's how that sandbox is uh, accessed or you can run a program in sandbox this way and then you can run it as, as a different type of uh, level. Okay so a little explanation about the sandbox. So like I said, if you're an average, above average user, just leave it the way it comes. Don't turn anything off, don't turn anything up, don't turn anything down. Just install the program, update it, do your scans, um, and just use your computer like you normally would. Uh, this is how I use it on my personal computer. Um, and it's And I play with malware every day and I have yet to infect myself and sometimes I accidentally double clicked a piece of malware which I thought it was in a zip folder and whatnot and I was like oh my god and nothing happened so this is how I use it um, and I highly recommend that most people stick to this now if you are a expert user and you want to see alerts there are certain settings you can change so you can see them what I would do is and this is if you really want to see alerts because you'll see them that's for sure First thing, I would change it to proactive security. That's number one. Then, I still would leave the sandbox on. But change Defense Plus to Paranoid Mode. And in the firewall, what I do is I open it up, open up the behavior settings, and I bring the alerts to medium. Okay, those couple of settings, you'll get tons of alerts um, installing applications uh, with sometimes Windows running uh, different background tasks uh, so you can have very granular control about um, the different settings and the different files that different programs access um, it will show you and you can even get more in depth here and you can turn on uh, a ton of different um, uh, monitors where um, you can add so you can see everything. I'm talking about DLL calls and all sorts of different things. You can really do that if you wanted to with a couple of adjustments to um, the security policy here. You can really uh, have it where the computer won't do anything without asking you. And this is if you're a um, expert user, as I like to call it. Um, some people talk about um, turning off the trusted files and stuff, uh, or uh, sorry, the trusted vendors, which is right here uh, deleting them and that type of stuff I don't recommend against that uh, I, uh, I mean I, I recommend against that because you're just gonna cause yourself a bunch of headaches um, what you'll see here is when you run the way I have it set up here is your uh, the safe files will have access to do whatever they want but the second you try to run something that you kinda don't know or you're not sure you'll get the pop-ups that you want you know you get all those pop-ups without the annoying ones from Windows and all that stuff that you really don't care about so it's kind of a an expert on one side and still easy to use on the other side now if you have um, somebody in your family or somebody that you know that you want to give them the best protection possible but they don't know nothing about computers um, this is my parents for example they know how to turn it on how to go to the internet uh, read some emails surf around uh, they don't install or uninstall any software everything is set up to work automatically for them uh, Windows updates is set up automatically uh, scanning is set up automatically this is how I have their setup I have it set up um, in. Wait, wait a minute here. Let me. Uh, I have it set up number one in Internet Security. Okay, so those are set up like that. Then I go to uh, Execution Control and I set it up to block. That means that any file that isn't on the win on the Komodo safe list will get blocked. There's no chance of it doing anything and then I go to the antivirus here and I turn on automatically quarantine threats found that means that if it, if the AV finds a, um, a uh, piece of malware it doesn't delete it it puts it in quarantine in case it's a false positive I can always get it back easily I do the same thing in their uh, scheduled scans and I have it set up to automatically quarantine and then I unselect show scanning progress Okay. That way they won't see it while it's scanning because most people who don't know what they're doing uh, will stop the scan. That's a big no-no. Firewall, I leave it up um, 
just like it is. I don't touch anything there. It's set up really good from the factory. And the last thing I do is I set up the parental controls. I set up to suppress all the alerts and I give it a password. Okay. With this setup, they can still update if they need to, but they shouldn't need to. Um, and everything is uh, taken care of. Of course, uh, I also set up a scheduled scan for them. Um, and I usually do like a weekly scan, and I can uh, you can set up on when you want it to scan and that type of stuff. So that's all set up. And let me show you what happens when, um, let's say they run a piece of malware. Let me get five pieces of malware, and I'll show you uh, what it looks like from their perspective. So give me one second here. Okay, so here I have five pieces of malware. And uh, I got this virus total report on all five of them. Okay, and this one's detected nine out of 43 times. So these are all fairly new um, pieces of malware. This one's eight out of 37. This one probably didn't get scanned by all the engines. Uh, nine out of 43. This one, uh, I think, is a, one of these I know is a root kit. This one's only two. So only two AVs, uh, and technically one, Icarus, um, sees this as malware, and this one is 12. And as you can see, none of this is caught by um, Komodo AV yet. So let's say they get an email that says, open this to see pictures of your family or to get a discount or whatnot. You know how some people are. They, they'll click on it, and they'll go, well, I want to get see this or get the discount or whatnot. And if they double-click on it and open it up or it tries to run, this is what they'll get. Nothing. It can't do a thing. It completely any of these have no uh, access to the system whatsoever. Here's I think this is that root kit. You can see this. That's all they see. They, they can't do anything with it. But at the same time, if uh, they go and say, and I and I tell them I call them or something, I go, uh, I want you guys to download a piece of software, whatever it's called. Let's say. Uh, I say go and download, um, or let's say Flash needs to update, right? And um, Flash Player needs to update, and um, you know you'll get that little pop-up automatically sometime, and uh, it'll say please update Flash Player, what you know, and whatnot. And because Flash Player is a um, signed program, and it's known by Komodo to be safe it will uh, work automatically uh, without any involvement uh, from them. So you can see the download manager opened up and downloaded automatically. Now you know it just takes a couple seconds here. Let me pause the video. Okay, here we go. It opened up. So as you can see, um, they just uh, install it and away we go. No pop-ups from Komodo, no nothing, and it's automatically installed and working perfectly, while at the same time they're completely protected against uh, malware. And this setup, the way I have it set up here, it basically makes Komodo completely transparent to the user. They'll never know it's there. Um, it won't bother them at all, even if something happens. Um, and let's say they want to install a program that is not on the safe list from Komodo. That personally, in my opinion, means that you, as the person who helped them install this, should probably look at that piece of software. Because why isn't it on the safe list for Komodo? Is it something that's not very popular? Or has it been a piece of software that's been um, hijacked by a malware writer and there's been code injected into it and something's been changed uh, where uh, Komodo Inner Security won't recognize it as the original piece of software. So that's also a good thing where it gives you a chance to be proactive for them um, in the sense of why won't the software work? Well, let me look at it for you and let me install it for you and get it set up for you. You know, it takes a couple minutes out of your life, but it, it really works. So um, I'm getting short on my time here. I uh, hope you guys saw how uh, a couple of these uh, three modes um, set up work. Um, in uh, different uh, different ways so uh, the user can be protected uh, depending on their experience level so I hope you guys enjoyed this review uh, and uh, have a good night and take care